Hello and welcome to our Voices series, where we talk with business and technology leaders about what they are seeing in the world today. My name is Rich Holzman, and I'm one of Accenture's business leaders in Europe, and I'm responsible for our Microsoft business. So the topic for today is low-code, no-code, which is an absolutely exploding area of the market. So for those that aren't familiar, low-code, no-code refers to the new suite of technologies that enable companies to either by using no-code, using drag and drop and connecting different components to build applications, or low-code, where they take that and they do very small additions to integrate other applications. And this area of the market is absolutely exploding. Um, Gartner has uh, has measured it something like a 23% growth in the last year, and they predict that it's going to continue to grow. And by 2025, it will it will uh, include something like 70% of the application development will be using low code, no code, versus the 25% today. And the pandemic has only accelerated this as companies have been forced to quickly adapt and react and change and respond to kind of the fluid nature of the pandemic, low code, no code has enabled companies to be very adaptive and very responsive and change the way that they work. And today I'm delighted to be joined by an expert in this field, which is uh, Niels Kapanya, who is the vice president of DIY software development at Shell. And Niels is going to share with us a bit about what they're doing, what he's seeing, some of the challenges, some of the success, and a little bit about the way forward. So, Niels, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Rich. I'm uh, really glad to be here. And, and I resonate very much with what you said. So we see this field growing very rapidly as well, and we think it's really, really important. Um, as, as people may know, uh, we are an energy company, of course, and we we see as our purpose powering progress together by providing more and cleaner energy solutions, uh, particularly the cleaner energy solutions, of course, being very hot at the moment. But actually, if you, if you listen to that first part, powering progress together, that's very much where we see all of this coming in. So um, before this, I was the CIO of our integrated gas and new energies business, but we recognize there's an important trend here often known as citizen development, uh, but we've labeled it as DIY development because the term citizen didn't quite resonate with people. But DIY in a company of engineers, so you mean we get to tinker with software, that resonated with people. And low code, no code is very much the backbone of that. Yeah, it's, it's often a lot of engineers coming out of university will know coding, will know Python particularly, but low code has really made it possible for everybody to embrace software development. And we've seen a huge uptake in this, a huge desire. And this whole point of doing all of this together means that now everybody also outside IT can really work with this. And you know, the democratization of digital becomes an effect. So Neil, so what are the challenges that Shell has faced and how did you use low code, no code to address those challenges? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Rich. I mean, uh, it, like I said, low code, no code is the backbone, but this is not your traditional rollout program. We're not rolling out this technology. What we're really focusing on is enabling communities of practice out there in the business who can start developing their own apps, delivering simple workflow automations, but also using Power BI uh, and other data visualization tools really to provide insights into their own data. And it's really a, an effect of you know, taking ownership of your data, taking ownership of your work and improving it with digital solutions. So that, that's really what we're focusing on. We're taking a, an agile approach, working very closely with those people in the business that we call the DIY developers and our power users to enable them to learn from them how best we work and to keep on expanding. It won't stop at low code, by the way. So we're, I already mentioned Python and that's clearly uh, also an important thing for us to do, but some of the challenges, Rich, are also, of course, very much about how do we ensure this all happens safely? What about data leakage? Uh, what about cyber risks? How do we make sure we don't expose the company by now all of a sudden everybody developing apps? 
how do we make sure the operational integrity of the landscape uh, stays intact? So in order to manage that, we've actually introduced a zoning model where we focus on providing a green zone, which is really aimed at full DIY, full life cycle ownership for developers, but so that they can do that in a safe way. And then we also have a red zone where we say it's simply off limit. You should need to leave that to the professionals. And something in the middle, think about it as rapid prototyping, DIY prototyping, you work in a sandbox and together with IT, you bring your app to production. So that allows us to put in place controls uh, and upskilling the people so that they can do things in a safe way. So Neil, yeah. so that's fantastic. I mean, you've talked, a, you've talked a lot about, you know, the challenges and how do you manage it? And from my conversations with other companies, that's a big, big part of it. But the other challenge people have is how do they get started? Because a lot of companies are using um, low code, no code, but they really just toy with it and play with it. And, and, and you and Shell are really using it as a, as a major way that you're transforming your application estate. So can you talk a little bit about the journey that you've taken? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely, Rich. So what we've seen very early on is that support for the communities and, and taking a community-based approach, approaching it as a change program has been key. So what we do is we work with the different communities. We run boot camps for them is how we call it. And sometimes we augment that with hackathons, which is adding a little bit of a gamification element. And by that, we really create enthusiasm there. It's truly DIY all the way. So we enable people to, to be self-sufficient. And I often add the joke, don't call the help desk. Which part of do it yourself did you not understand? So enabling people to take up their own learning, to answer their own questions. So we run Yammer groups where you see the community answering their own questions. And we as a central team play a role in that. We facilitate that, but we try to really make them self-supporting. So that's where we're focused. And that has been rather successful. I would also add the hackathons have been a great success. If you get senior leadership to be part of that hackathon, actually it, it, it works both ways because you get people very excited to present their use cases to senior leadership. And senior leadership has been blown away with the creativity that this has unlocked and really going after real value. Yeah? Uh, so of course, money, money talks. And we're very proud that already in the you know, first six to nine months, we've actually delivered over $35 million of value in cost reductions, efficiency improvements, and, 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 and like things like that which I think is a, is, is a number that speaks for itself and, and we proudly go after more. I mean, Niels, one of the things that you shared with me previously is, uh, is your view about how low code, no code kind of attacks the tail, which I thought was a fascinating kind of concept. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what, what you mean by that? Yeah, that, yeah, indeed, indeed. So what we've often seen, particularly in our assets, so in our refineries, in our gas plants, et cetera, in our chemicals plants is you know, usually in life, uh, there's always the 80-20 rule. Yeah, So you try to focus on the top 20% of your initiatives that drive 80% of your value. Now, actually in assets that often doesn't hold, uh, there is a long tail of quite valuable opportunities out there that is almost impossible to go after with big IT initiatives. And, and even worse, particularly in the downstream side of our business, which is a low margin business, you know, the, the, the budgets are squeezed, so you can only go after that top 10%. So you leave a long, valuable tail out there. By enabling people to do it themselves, to go with low-code solutions, to focus on those valuable opportunities, we've actually unlocked quite a bit of value. And things that would never be touched uh, around, you know, enterprise systems. Uh, there are many examples, which is like automating a little paper process uh, that would never make it to an enterprise system, but actually is quite valuable. So indeed that long valuable tail is something we can now really go after and people can go after it themselves. Yeah, I mean, just to add to that, I mean, what I'm seeing in, in other companies is, uh, is given the pandemic, people need to tweak and customize and slightly change the current processes. And 
And the whole low code, no code movement enables them to do that in a very quick, responsive way. So I guess to the Gartner stats, I expect it's just going to explode. So maybe a question for you on the whole um, you know, expectation. So you clearly have had a lot of success in Shell with this whole movement. Has the whole low code, no code lived up to your expectations around what you thought it would deliver and Shell's expectations? And where do you see it going forward? Yeah, um, well, we're very proud of what we have achieved so far. I would even go one step further, it has exceeded our expectations. Yeah. So, so the value we've already delivered, the number of people we've we've enrolled in the program. So, so that's been really great. Now, I do see quite a few challenges still ahead, and we're working very closely with Microsoft to address some of those because the, the the platforms aren't necessarily where they fully need to be. We we believe very strongly in a zero trust environment where we have full control over who accesses what data, uh, identity access management is very well controlled, and we're working further with Microsoft to truly address those challenges. But Niels, thank you so much for spending the time with us today and sharing your insights, and, and congratulations to you and Shell on your leadership in this space. I think it really is fantastic, and, uh, and I wish you the best of luck, and I look forward to, to talking to you again in the future. Yeah, thanks, Rich. It was a good conversation and look forward to engaging in the future.